here's an example of some real data. This is data from the Gulf of Mexico, and we're looking at a depth slice through some salt bodies and some sediments draped onto those salt bodies. So we have a wave equation migration on the left from narrow azimuth and uh, a wave equation on the right from our wide azimuth data. So if we just highlight a couple of points there, you can see that the improved illumination and multiple attenuation from the wide azimuth data brings out details in the sediments. Now another important point here is that I've uh, kind of designated that uh, wave equation migration for the wide azimuth one as a fast track product, which means it's not had a full processing sequence, it's basically come off the boat and we've migrated it. And yet it's miles ahead of the narrow of the image. So what does that mean? <coughs> well, it, it kind of points us towards that in certain geological scenario, narrow of acquisition and narrow of processing techniques are reaching a kind of technical limit. And we can make some incremental improvements, we can add new migrations, like reverse time migration, and you'll have some incremental improvement. But to really take the next step forward, you need to look at something a bit more radical, changing the acquisition geometry to wide azimuth, for example. So the third of those benefits of wide azimuth is the multiple attenuation. And there's two things here. First of all, we have this inherent ability of wide azimuth to stack out noise and multiples, which we call the aerial stack. And basically, what that's about is um, as we increase the offset azimuth diversity of our shot point or whatever data group we're going to stack, you increase the sensitivity to azimuth or move out. So that means multiples which are dipping or have azimuth or anisotropy stack out more effectively. But that's not the end of the multiple story. Um, 3D wide azimuth data sets also give us these 3D gathers. 3D data collections, which we can use 3D algorithms on to improve noise attenuation. I'll come back to that. So let's just have a quick look at a synthetic example for the stacking powers of wide azimuth. Now, in the absence of real wise data outside of the Gulf of Mexico, um, much of the industry, including ourselves, have been busy with synthetics. So here's a, a synthetic of a typical North Sea scenario. So we have a shallow water bottom, um, we have fast North Sea velocities, and we have a diffractor on the seabed there. And also we have some multiples which have indicated with the arrows. So we have some seabed multiples and we have some diffracting multiple. And also we have this big um, multiple with this big diffraction tail as well. So that's an arrow, a simulated narrow azimuth stack. And if we do a wide azimuth stack on that, we see that the multiples stack out nicely. Again, that's just the power of the arrow stack. So where does this lead us? Well, this kind of exercise can help plan our wide azimuth surveys, optimize the parameters. So we can do this for a range of scenarios and measure the noise and do a kind of a cost-benefit exercise. So on the bottom we have the cost, a number of shots, shot density, and on the vertical axis there we have the noise ratio. So we have narrow azimuth at the top, and any decrease in the noise we get is, is the benefit. So that particular scenario I showed you there with a 2.4 kilometer cross line offset and 200 meter shot line spacing puts us nicely in the kind of sweet spot for the uh, cost of benefit analysis. <coughs> so we can use this kind of exercise to help optimize wide azimuth surveys and see if they are applicable for different geological scenarios. <coughs> so that is the proven benefits of wide azimuth. Um, next thing to do is have a look at wide azimuth in action. So the story for marine is obviously going wide, from narrow azimuth to wide azimuth. Land is a little bit of a different story. We've always had an element, or we've always had the ability to, to do wide azimuth. So now we're looking at going dense. Seabed, I'm not going to talk too much about seabed, but um, seabed has always been there. It's always allowed us to do dense multi-component wide azimuth seismic. Processing the story is about the new range of true 3D algorithms that we can use on wide azimuth data and how we can improve the imaging. And then I'll touch very briefly on reservoir as well. <coughs> so for marine, we've seen a rapid evolution since 2002, 2004 when the first multi-azimuth and uh, wide azimuth surveys were, were acquired. 
And uh, we've seen a rapid evolution in acronyms as well. WAS, RAS, RAS, FAS indicates the amount of effort the industry has been putting into this. So, marine wide azimuth. Uh, I suppose one of the questions is, is how wide? How wide do we want to go? Well, if we go back to that schematic seismic experiment we did, a little source in the center and we're trying to acquire a big array of receivers around it to record the wave field, this would be our ideal marine spread. But I'm not sure whether you can spot this couple of flaws in this design. First of all, we have difficulty pushing streamers. Um, quite often we have difficulty towing with the number of streamers that we actually want at the right density. So we have to, uh, we have to compromise. We have to, uh, have to look at ways of replicating that. So there's a whole range of different geometries. And you should, should consider these geometries as, like a, as a toolbox. Different geometries suit different targets and uh, different size of uh, different areas of coverage and things like that. So <coughs> the uh, most widespread one, used for typically, typically for exploration, is this multi-vessel wide azimuth towed streamer. And the idea is that relative to the source point, you have progressive um, savings of the boat and the, uh, the streamers to build this cross-line aperture. Now it gives you uh, limited offset azimuth coverage, and I suppose what I mean by that is typically with these wide azimuth tow streaming surveys, we're looking at an aspect ratio of about two to one, so eight kilometers of streamers and about four kilometers of, of cross line aperture, and we get good results from it. And it's very efficient for covering large areas, and it's used extensively for exploration and data library. Single vessel, well, we've got some different options. Um, BP has been very busy with uh, multi-azimuth surveys, so the idea here is that you use a single vessel and you acquire data or you sample that wave field on discrete azimuths. So that gives you <coughs> sampling along with discrete azimuths but nothing in between. So effectively what you end up with are these discrete narrow azimuth data sets all at different azimuths which you then have to combine somehow during the process which isn't quite as elegant as the wide azimuth approach where you have a continuous data set, but still quite valuable. <coughs> and if you're going to do this with a single vessel, you're probably looking at smaller targets, it's more of a development tool. Something else we can do is we can shoot in <laughs> circles. So the attraction of this is that it's uh, very efficient. You shoot it continuously, there's no line turns, no dead time. Um, however, some of the disadvantages, um, mm. streamers prefer to run in a straight line. So as soon as you turn, they put up resistance. And that resistance manifests itself as noise. Uh, the things we can do, we use solid streamers, which are less susceptible to flow noise, will reduce the noise. We can also process some of this noise out as well. So maybe the noise isn't such a big issue. The other potential for this circle shooting is um, you could get full azimuth data by an aspect ratio of one to one and have a full set of offset azimuths. But there may be something issue with that which we'll come back to later. The seabed, we've been doing wide azimuth seabed for, for years now routinely. And we're going to reverse the experiment. So we have one receiver in the centre and then we're free to shoot whatever kind of shock grid we want to on the surface into that. So we can shoot to acquire wide azimuth or full azimuth data. We also benefit from the fact that we can record multi-component data. But again, with the current seabed systems available, with deployment and uh, perhaps the limited number of nodes and the limited amount of cable out there, it's more suited to smaller targets and more kind of developmental prospects. We anticipate that new generation or new concepts in ocean bottom will improve the economics and make it more viable for large-scale work. <coughs> 